All right, who's next for this Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Terra moveset Gen 9 sneak peek thing we've been doing? Oh, it's Scyther, which means Scizor, which means Technician Bullet Punch Choice Band Scizor that also gets 50% more damage because of Steel Terra type. God has turned his back on the Pokemon community, hasn't he? Okay, so if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, share the insanity with all your friends, and please comment down below. I need the help. There's so many movesets. There's so many Pokemon. There's so much infinite possibility. It's impossible for a single person to try to figure out all the interactions of Terrastal and all the cool movesets. But starting with Scyther, can we meme it up? Does the extra damage from going like Double Bug, Terra, Swarm, maybe Technician, Fury Cutter, Super Giga Bonus damage just mean that, hey, if we slap a Scarf on the Scyther and we get enough snowballing turns, we just then one-shot everything? Easiest 6-0 of your Pokemon career. So let's break down the Pokemon a bit more before we get into the damage calculations and how this ends up working out. Choice Scarf, I feel that it's kind of needed. You're, you got a lot of weaknesses, especially with Terra. You don't want to be taking like a double boosted hit or a Terra Blast or anything like that. You don't want a Jolteon to just outspeed you and give you on a Thunderbolt. We got 70 hit points, 80 on defenses. We're not that strong. Now, in the past, and maybe we'll break down this moveset after we talk about Fury Cutter, there was like Eviolite, and then that gave you opportunities to go like Swords Dance and then Super Wall Break but I want to outspeed the Scarf Chomp, and if I'm stacked on Fury Cutter from KOing its teammate, then maybe we just straight up win. Other uh, moveset options, U-Turn, not a lot of damage. I don't really like the playstyle of like Scarf, U-Turn, Volt Switch, whatever. I just think it puts you too far behind, like you're not getting a lot out of it most of the time. But if you're getting bonus damage, maybe it just ends up working a bit. Dual Wing Beat, that's gonna be fine until we drop our stab, and then knock off, just good utility if you're going to be a free KO anyways. So, Fury Cutter damage. Oh, Blissey's back. After, after that last video, I'm just terrified, guys. Like, modified Skarm Bliss, Terra Bliss, Chansey, defensive sets. I... Like, you need to have a Pokemon that can KO Chansey. Even if, like, only 40% of people are running it, which is still an incredibly high amount. Even if 20% of people are running it, it's not cool to just have 20% more losses because you don't have proper physical Pokemon. So, all of your movesets kind of need to see how they interact with the Blissey or the Chansey and make sure you don't just get completely swept out. So, physical Pokemon, Choice Scarf, 110 attack using a very low base power move, even if it's something like a Blissey, you're not really going to be doing much to it initially. The plan and the hope is, can we outpace the damage? So, Fury Cutter goes from 22%. And this is where Swarm gets weird, because Swarm activating on one-third, if you eat just pretty much any neutral hit, it's probably putting you there. So you're either KO'd, or you're getting that 50% bonus damage. Unreliable, but really nice if you get it. So that could be a thing, or we can go for the Technician. Now, Technician is only going to work for the first activation of Fury Cutter, but then that, that kind of maybe gives us the damage out. Like, anything that isn't Blissey doesn't survive the first hit into second hit. So, Fury Cutter, hopefully we survive. Maybe we just get, like, a cleanup blow on an enemy Pokemon. Then the next one's a KO. And then after that, it's just straight 160 base power GG on the enemy. I would like to see, like, Adamant. Because now, oh, yeah, nothing can take us out once we're stacking. And we get set up very quickly. Turn three. Not three turns. Third turn. We're there with all of that damage. So that's the thing, but now we're losing really important speed scenarios. So as long as it's not a Blissey, should be okay. And yeah, the damage gets pretty scary pretty quick. This isn't just like an entire video dedicated to Scyther and we have a lot of Pokemon to talk about. So that's effectively the idea. Can you run it? Yeah. Will it work? And then, like I mentioned, there is off-meta Eviolite Scyther that can do some things. Sets up pretty hard into certain bulky Pokemon. Eviolite gives it just enough durability to where you get one Swords Dance, then start exploding things with Technician, Bug Bite, Damage. Brick Break is there, so at least you have some kind of threat against the Chansey Blissey. If you get two Swords Dance, now you're looking really scary. Knock Off, just really strong against any tank Pokemon. So, a lot of combos, and then you just add in that survivability. Crazy thing about Scyther is even though it's a pre-evolution, same base stats as Scizor. 
and then you just kind of work it around. Um, different speed tiers and shenanigans to add into your bulker possibility, but it is nice if something tries to respond to you that is decently fast. You can actually just go, now I'm plus two swords dance, what are you doing bringing this 100 base speed Pokemon on me? Bug bite, GG. All right, now we can see what the Scizor looks like, and it's already a devastating Pokemon before we get into Terra. You go Bullet Punch on Stab, on Technician, on Choice Band, on one of the harder hitting Pokemon in the game, and then it's just bulky because we're playing on priority. So you get to outspeed the opponent as a tank, survive pretty much anything that isn't fire, but then we bring Terra into the mix, 50% more bonus damage, and also we're losing a 4X weakness. So now you can survive certain fire type hits. Uh, the only weird thing might be like if speed creeping ends up mattering on priority or not. Would be kind of interesting if Scizor does become popular enough to where if you just want to get like that in there. But it's going to be level 50. So the EVs are going to get just a little weirder on how much it takes to get those extra stats. I don't know. You do something like that. Now maybe it matters when you just need to outspeed the opponent Scizor in the neutral because everyone's running this devastating Pokemon, or some other weird priority stuff comes into play. This is effectively what it's going to be looking like. Let's see the damage of uh, Bullet Punch coming in and two-shotting the Blissey. Okay, that actually seems something very important, very needed, and we're just going to change this around really quick on the Terra, because this is going to be a defense-boosting Pokemon. Do we outpace it? And if we add crit up, then it just doesn't matter. So, do we outpace it? It seems like, unless you get double low damage roll into leftovers, it's just going to be a two-hit KO. So, all right, so let's make this a more real-world kind of scenario. So, let's say you take that 62% hit, but then leftovers is going to come in and heal about 6% of that. So, we're up to 44.2%, but it won't give us that. So, okay. 44% after leftovers, that means that once you get your defense curl in, it's going to be a 68% chance to, to one hit KO. And that's after getting like one of the lowest damage rolls. So Blissey's not surviving this in most scenarios, but there's like a small chance. And then that's when you start getting to weird soft foiledness. I know we just have superpower here, just straight KOing the Blissey. And in a lot of situations, that's what you want to do. But you do have to think about the drawback of, I'm now banded on a fighting type move and on minus one minus one now this is also where the game gets super wild because blissey i talked about how it might want to terrestrial into a fairy typing it does that the bullet punch it just straight lights out for the blissey but that creates weird superpower interactions on the fighting to mitigate the normal weakness the game is going to just become outrageous and what if the blissey is actually like a water type blissey or something and now scissor really doesn't have a way of dealing with it because okay superpower is going to turn into the minus one and then blissey could potentially be getting a defense buff or just straight going for some kind of healing inside of it and now it's a water type instead so you really have no options against it i think the game's just going to become pure rng i think that's that's where we are right now you know you there's already the chance that you just straight lose in Pokemon select or some weirdness you can't account for happens like there's already a lot of weirdness with the move sets where it's like wait th this move set doesn't even have usage statistics on it and this dude hard countered me with it what are the odds of that well now it's what are the odds of a 4% chance this dude has a water terrestrial blissey and you committed to your steel terrestrial sizzle or now you just lose the game off of that so I think, I think it's going to be one of those things where it seems like the skill is trying to get diluted just to make it more fun for casuals. Because, like, yeah, you could just fluke a win against anyone now by just RNGing the right thing the opponent can't predict. And I'm okay with that because, like, Pokemon as a skill expression game is kind of weird. And now it makes your skillful play more about understanding and capitalizing on win conditions. And I've always been a win condition player. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens to longtime elite players like myself. I feel like I might be able to balance it out because I've got some weird sets. I'm going to be doing some crazy stuff in this. So maybe I fluke some wins and then I get fluked on some losses. I think Smogon is just going to completely collapse because... I can only call it a daycare at this point. The rules and movesets are so baby, the Smogon players are so pitifully casual, that to ban the gimmick of Dynamax 
for the generation. And then also weak Pokemon like Dracovish and Darmanitan, because they're very one and a half dimensional Pokemon at best, so they're very easy to play around. So the thing about Smogon, and why I've been against them since I started being competitive back in Generation 4, is because they're just casuals that can't handle a loss. That they ban anything that regularly beats them instead of adapting, because it's all about what they think is proper, high-level, elite play, and then they end up just kind of making their own kiddie pool. Smogon's whole gimmick is refusing to adapt, and Generation 9's Terrastal gimmick is all about crazy, unpredictable adaptation. It's gonna be silly. Now, Swords Dance is just straight up more power on the Scizor that's effectively free. Does take a committal turn, but then after that, you're just straight up doing more damage with the Bullet Punch, Technician, and now Terrastal, so that could be absolutely terrifying. Citrus Berry is pretty good. Lumberry means that, oh, if they stack a Pokemon to try to get a burn onto you, that just goes away, and now Scizor is way too far ahead and way too unstoppable. Again, it takes a hit, so it takes a hit for the Swords Dance against tankier, set up -er matchups. You can just kind of roost and stay ahead of your opponent, and then you just stack too much and you get too strong. Bug Bite with Technician grabs a lot of damage. Um, what you want is also just kind of whatever, because, all right, so that, that's not really that great. Um, you can put in something like the Dark Move here, but it's going to be less damage because you're not getting, actually, you don't have Stab anymore. So that's one of the things about Terrastal is that you can maybe just go for like, what if there's a random scenario where, oh, I just need to use Bug Bite here to take out a slower Pokemon that would just go down to it. I don't know. Game has a million different game states. And then you Terrastal, and now this doesn't have Stab anymore. But once you Terrastal, it's effectively just for Technician. But then that means like the knockoff, you don't have to feel bad about giving up a Stab move because you're Mono Steel after you go to Terrastal and it's all about the Bullet Punch and it's all about the extra utility or just finding the little bit of coverage. So... That's still like something that just brain breaking as to what the better options are on certain Pokemon. And then going to the damage calculation, if we get rid of the choice band and we turn this into plus two, yeah, Blissey's having a really bad time. And I don't think there's any amount of defense curling that's going to keep up with the Scizor. Also, your utility isn't going to be crazy. It's not like clutch ice beam into Serene Grace Freeze and then I can beat the Scizor. Nah, this thing is just going to come in, it's going to Swords Dance once or twice. I think you just want the twice, because let's say you go Swords Dance, Bullet Punch, Bullet Punch. Well, why didn't you just go Swords Dance, Swords Dance, Bullet Punch? Now you're at plus four forever. And it, there's very little counterplay to the Scizor after that, and it's just always going to have outrageous amounts of damage. So that's also kind of the funny thing, is that even though the Scyther's kind of fun, that if you got it set up on some kind of like fury cutter and you're just one-shotting everything on scarf no counterplay this just sets up faster and then has priority now there's still a lot of merit to running the choice band because it's instant it's instant destroy anything like just take this matchup in that's a resisted hit onto the jolteon that's two shotting it so if jolteon took any kind of chip damage maybe it's life orb and taking a little burn maybe there's a stealth rocks on the field or something like you just you obliterate pokemon that resist you so any kind of sweeper pokemon is not going to want to go up against the choice band terrastal technician bullet punch scissor and again yeah like in this in this you could also just say well i eat the thunderbolt citrus berry makes me super healthy and then i swords dance and one shot it so you can also have that, but it eliminates any kind of weird counterplay and just means you're showing up and nuking way too many Pokemon. Now, I've already talked about how Gengar just kind of seems like a liability, pretty much unplayable Pokemon, and things like the Scizor just make that more so. Really, the only thing Gengar can do is Focus Band Will-O-Wisp, which sounds terrible. So I think it's about that, and then the rest of what Scizor wants to do is just kind of play to the things that resist the Blood Punch, which is why Knock Off is just going to be pretty nice. And then you also get more coverage on the Choice Band set, so you have a lot of options here on the Scizor. Oh, I don't want these videos to take so long, but like Terrastal, you have to think about opponent's Terrastal, your Terrastal, the different move sets, upgrading Pokemon to Generation 9. It's it's all over the place. And now we can and now we talk about Gyarados, which is these are Pokemon, so when we started out the decks, I, I was lost. I had no ideas, because like, uh, Wigglytuff, what's that gonna do? Venomoth, it's actually worse than Butterfree in a lot of situations. 
Doug Trio, you don't even want to rastalize it. Persian's weird. Golduck's unplayable. Uh, Hypno just sucks. Gengar's got power crap. But now we're like into just dumpstery kind of Pokemon. So Gyarados was super strong in Generation 8. And that's a lot because of Dynamax just giving it Mega G Giga Synergy. You get a free Dragon Dance while attacking your opponent with higher base power moves that did not exist before. Because, oh, you go bounce. That takes two turns to stab on a Gyarados that doesn't do anything. Or you turn it into one of the most powerful moves in the game. Airstream, plus one on the speed. Moxie on the KO. Dragon Dance while, K while KOing your opponent as you set up a Dragon Dance into Dynamax. And you can easily 6-0 with a Gyarados while also retaining coverage. You don't get away with that as much in Terrastal, but now you still have like a lot of scary things. Moxie, you could want to run it. Because then again, you're getting the same snowball that once you hit like two Dragon Dances, well, you're one-shotting everything at that point, so I don't know if the Moxie matters. Intimidate plays into your natural bulk. So there's a lot of weirdness when considering how Gyarados is going to play. As for what you want to do on Terrastalizing, you could just go water and get even more damage and make it to where even Pokemon that resist water type moves, they're not going to want the plus two double stab on Waterfall that also has a chance to just flinch you and ruin the game. Lumberry, again, this is just kind of mitigate any kind of status that would try to slow you down on the Gyarados. Good coverage on Ice Fang, Power Whip, potentially Earthquake. It's just like those devastating things you don't want to deal with. And then when you Terrastalize, you're not 4x weak to the electric, and Dynamax doesn't exist, so you're not going to be eating, like, giga terrain-boosted, outrageous electric-type hits. So, there's still a chance that you, like, you survive a non-stab electric super effective hit or something like that. You can also just live out of fantasy and become a Garchomp with Dragon Dance and Taunt. And that's another weird angle around the Gyarados. What Pokemon have the stat package? have this moveset package, and what typing do you want inside of it? So yeah, if we take a list of Pokemon that learn Dragon Dance, this is where things get kind of weird, because you're thinking, wait, Kamo'o, how is it that a Pokemon with 75 hit points, 125 defense, 125 special defense, and more speed got less play than the Gyarados? And it also has, like, really good mitigating abilities. I don't know. Because it's like, well, dragon fighting, yeah, fairies everywhere, but electric's everywhere with something like a Rotom just hard countering out a Gyarados, well, until Power Whip comes into play, which is a big reason why I was used. So, I mean, there's just like a lot of weird interactions. So, do you want to go Terra Kamo'o, or is Terra Gyarados still better on the stats? Looking at some other Pokemon, yeah, Tyranitar is going to be devastating for this generation, and we haven't even gotten to Generation 2 yet, but that's a very low speed, so... At one or two Dragon Dances on the Gyarados on a Jolly Nature, you're one-shotting everything while being in an untouchable amount of speed. Actually, it's probably worth bringing up how Scizor interacts with the Gyarados. Okay, that's just filthy. Now we can see some other ideas on the Gyarados that, while Jolly is cool, if you get plus two on Adamant, you're just winning everything anyways, so that's kind of like a breakpoint that just adds more damage. Same thing on the Mystic Water. Definitely something you can play, especially if you're going into, like, Terra boosted damage or something. But, like, Adamant Mystic Water is not one-shotting Scizor. And Scizor is kind of almost one-shotting in return on the Choice Band. Okay, so the damage numbers when it comes to, like, Scizor versus Gyarados get really weird because now we're dealing with potential Intimidate. And this is also the case for Intimidate over Moxie. So now Scizor's at minus one but still very strong on all like the bullet punch boosting damage, but a chance to three hit KO. So it depends on like, if Scizor comes in as a response to Gyarados, Gyarados is having a very bad time. Uh, this is an Adamant Mystic Water set, which kind of shows all the different things you can do with Gyarados. If you run Adamant, you still outspeed things at plus one speed, but you really want to be at that plus two, and then the numbers also get crazy. This is Mystic Water over a Lumberry or a Citrus Berry, so just kind of gambling everything on the damage. I am factoring in like terrestrialization. I'm factoring in potential dragon dances. So if it's the Jolly moveset, like you, you're not really banking on a KO into the Scizor. And if it's the Swords Dance moveset on the Scizor, that means we're gonna be looking at plus one, not plus two. And then like these weird trade situations. So 
The thing is, if Stealth Rocks is already set up and then Gyarados comes in, it's going to be taking that flying damage, so that factors in. If it becomes water, it can switch out and switch in a bit more freely. If it has more damage, more aggro, it responds to certain Pokemon. So once again, getting into this, everything is unpredictable. It's going to be the craziest rock, paper, scissors, and really, all you can do is pray. All you can do is pray that they don't have the 30% chance the move set counters yours. But this is also a testament to a Scizor that's already set up. So if it's at plus one, full health, Gyarados not at plus one, no Dragon Dances, nothing like that. It doesn't immediately outright one-shot or threaten the Scizor, even with Terrastal boosted damage. You go to plus three, mm, that's where it gets kind of sketchy. It's like two bullet punches onto the Gyarados to kind of go into that setup is a thing but then Gyarados is now like going to get KO'd by anything finding the plus three and hitting it but then you go down because of the plus one to Rastal maybe some other numbers come into play but not really yeah uh game is game is like extra spooky right now and that was just a tangent from the thing I was trying to talk about with Dragon Dance being a thing and all that other stuff so yeah I feel like one of the scenarios you're trying to build into is like what if Garchomp was a dragon dancing Pokemon you can somewhat build that on Gyarados I guess you can somewhat build that on Dragonite Salamence but Garchomp has like that unique bulkiness and interesting type setup kind of thing going for it but with uh Gyarados if you were to eat an electrolyte move instead go ground get a free dragon dance turn that's potentially game winning right there uh now you're dealing with Earthquake, so Terra Blast, we don't know the move power. It could be 80, it could be 90, it could be 100. Like, that's been in the back of my mind, but it just seems so preposterous to give every Pokemon a stronger Thunderbolt. I just feel like if it's 90, well, Gyarados actually already has the Earthquake on Terra Blast, or like over the Terra Blast, so that's just more damage. You become ground, you grab that stab in there, and yeah, you're effectively just Garchomp that now has the ability to Dragon Dance with an Intimidate, or maybe you go Moxie at that point, because now you're losing some of your stab, you know, you're not getting double water bonus damage, and that also opens up your non-waterfall options for extra bits of coverage. Taunt, I think, is going to be a very necessary move on a lot of teams, that if you keep getting run over by Chansey, Blissey, Skarmbliss, tanky setup Pokemon, we haven't even talked about what Appleton is going to do. Yeah, get scared. So, if you don't, if you're not running double taunt, you just lose the game to tank. It, it's going to be, like, the reality of some situations. So, having a Pokemon that can taunt and then 6-0, going to be kind of important. And going to not get one shot by an Electro-type move, convert everything on the fly, still have durability to potentially survive some moves. Or maybe at that point, yeah, you just run something. I consider Muscle Band like a really trappy, newbie, baity item, but again, like maybe this finds damage numbers. I don't like the idea of Life Orb because if you take a hit and then you do like three one shots, well now you're just KO'd to your own burn damage and you're putting yourself in a lot more susceptible priority scenarios. So even though that like gives you the mega uber one shots, again, we're just there for the Moxie. So Moxie, Stab, Earthquake, Dragon Dance, maybe that actually turns some damage. Maybe you do want the Citrus Berry. Maybe you do want the Lum Berry. Therefore, there's no counterplay. Because that's a free turn. Like, if they throw a Will-O-Wisp at you, they throw, throw a Thunder Wave at you, if they do something desperate against you, and then you just negate it, you, you bought a free turn, which is another Dragon Dance, which is turning a two-shot into a two-shot where you take no damage and get a Moxie. So, like, you just win the game. I say you want Jolly on this, because, depending on those interactions, but maybe Intimidate saves you against a Scizor, so it's 100% needed. And then if you go off the water typing, now you're susceptible to Bullet Punch. Now you're susceptible to Ice Shard. Oh no. So the game gets, just gets weird. The game gets too weird, but it's like, you have to consider all of these different possibilities you can do. And here's one of them that shuts down tanks and has a high chance of going 6-0. Uh, next up, we have Eevees. That needs its own video. That's probably going to be the next video. And then we have the end of Generation 2, and this video has already gone long enough. So even though we've only covered one, two, three evolutionary lines of Pokemon for a whole ass video, and we haven't even started on Dragonite yet, yeah, I guess, I guess that's just going to be it. That's how we fill it out. So what is Dragonite going to do? So here we just have your Dragonite. Oh, man, we didn't even talk about this Gyarados moveset on, like, what you want to run on it. Is ground ice good? Yeah? 
seems pretty good to me. Also, depending on what Pokemon are going to be in the game or, or are not going to be in the game. There's no way Shodinja can exist in a world where Terrastal is, so I don't think we have to worry about that. Uh, ground Ice versus Ground Water. Oh, Ground Water is just terrible. Which makes sense because of Grass Pokemon, so... You don't have Water Stab anymore. Yeah, I think that's going to work out just fine. Oh man, and I realized I was going to make a note about the metronome item on Scizor or Scyther. TLDR, don't do it. It sounds really cool. It sounds really cute to hit like that. Oh, I've just bullet punched four times and I'm extra one-shotting everything. You really never catch up to choice band damage. And the only time it matters is if you're on... Like, it needs to be so perfect. Like, you have to come in and you have to finish off an opponent with the first bullet punch. Then you have to two-shot the opponent while surviving on Scizor for your second and third bullet punch and now you're just barely ahead on choice band damage so the third pokemon that needs to come in would need to have otherwise survived a choice band says or by only like five percent of its health and now you're at 80 percent and you're still barely ahead of choice band so yeah metronome it's way too slow on the wind up and even on like the uh scyther move set where instead of like scarf we run the metronome and then we go for the whatever any pokemon that comes in it's faster than you is kind of kind of rough but it does like have that interesting synergy to where technician fills in for metronome as you're fury cuttering and getting the bonus damage it's viable and this was something that a fan did mention in a previous video like i said like comment subscri subscribe please i need your comments um viable but i don't know like maybe this actually works because like if you just get the right setup where you chain the perfect amount of hits and the perfect amount of Pokemon into the perfect amount of lack of counterplay and you remove anything that's faster on your opponent's team, it eventually wall breaks faster than a Blissey can set up. I don't know. And now we can talk about Dragonite. So this is your just straight up Dragonite. Outrage, Earthquake, what does that look like? Oof. Especially if Togekiss just comes in and walls you out. But you really want the Roost on Dragonite. It feels really good, especially when there's a lot of bulky and tanky setup kind of Pokemon, and that's only going to get worse as the game goes on. And as as I said, like now we can just live out some kind of wacky fantasy where we become a Garchomp that has not 4x weakness to ice, and we can also use Dragon Dance. So, do you just kind of say, whatever. We're filling everything in with the Thunder... Not Wave, Thunder Punch, misclick. And then what does that do to our coverage? Makes it look all right. Couple Pokemon to worry about, but then Outrage should just KO anything else. And if we remove fairies on their team and they've already Terrastalized, so they're not gonna throw a Terrastal fairy type Pokemon at us, it's gonna be pretty good. And that's things to consider, like the synergy of having just regular Dragonite. You don't have to Terrastalize. You just have regular Dragonite. And regular Dragonite's still gonna be a strong boy. And then Scizor comes in, and now you have Scizor to where, oh, if anything wants to survive the power of a Dragonite just coming in and removing them by going Fairy, or just bringing a Fairy-type to immune this, now Scizor is incredibly threatening to that Pokemon, and if Scizor switches in, eats the hit or whatever, because, like, Fairy-type move being resisted by Steel-type Scizor, Scizor's gonna be fine with that. They don't- you can't switch out against the Scizor, or else you get two-tapped by a Bullet Punch Choice Band, or you get a free Swords Dance set up, and now you get one-tapped by the plus two bullet punch on Scizor. So, like, synergies like this, outside of all the Terra Madness we've talked about, just two Pokemon. Really strong core right here. But then that means, like, maybe you just go wall-breaking Dragonite in some situations? Because there's going to be, like, a lot of slow tank Pokemon that just want to overwhelm. Adamant, maybe. Jolly, maybe. But now you're always behind a Jolly Gyarados. So that could be bad, especially if you're not Terrastalizing, you just even Ice Fang. So there's, like, so many responses into the game right now. But this, almost nothing survives the 134 Life Orb Outrage. And then nothing can really kill you because of that multi-scale and your pseudo-legendary stats. Thunder Punch coverage really nice. Earthquake Dual Wing Beat. I feel like in the past, so we have Earthquake, Outrage, and then Dual Wing Beat. There was like this weird thing where this actually, like Dragonite has the highest amount of potential super effective moves in the game against the roster. And it's something that involves, like, a flying-type move. And it's, it's you really wouldn't expect it. So, yeah, we have something like this. What does water give us? See? That'd be funny if that had, like, 800. And I'm immediately proven wrong. But, no. Like, that's just... That hits super on everything. And normal into dragon is just... It's just a KO. 
So anything slower than 80 base speed just loses. And now you have a potential choice band steel scissor to make up for anything faster than 80 base speed, which is generally going to get more frail as its speed goes higher, and scissor is going to be more happy to one-shot it with a bullet punch. Or again, Dragonite just takes over. You get a Dragon Dance because multi-scale, you go Terra Dragon Outrage because they don't have fairies and then nothing survives it. You go Ground and then Earthquake is outrageous amounts of damage, you're safe on Lumberry, your other coverage, and then like there's more just durable Dragonites out there that will run the roost and you can't beat it eventually. So yeah, game's kind of wacky. So that's the weird thing about some Generation 9 movesets is like, we still have mostly just Dragonite doing the same thing with a small chance it has some kind of out into a Terra, but it's mostly like now how does Dragonite, a traditional moveset and a traditionally strong Pokemon, interact with other Pokemon that are now playing around and fiddling with their types? And what does that mean for like team synergies and builds and what you need to do to respond to that? A lot. I'm very tired.